So if you haven't seen my previous video, this is part two of me building a full-size Velociraptor skeleton. Why? I don't know. I just thought it'd be something good to do. So by the end of the last video, I think this is what you would have seen. These are all the parts that I basically needed other than the tail. And with them all laid out and loosely placed, this is how they all look. Now, it took a long time to get here. I've probably been working on this for over three months now, but it's finally getting to a point where it's nearly done so bear with me there will be a part three unfortunately but it's just the way that it goes so all of these parts are printed on my fdm printer so starting at the head end this is the sort of order of how they're all going to be placed eventually now i do actually build this in reverse just because it makes more sense when doing it from the tail end and you'll see that in a second but most of these parts are fdm printed other pieces like the gastrolea, which are just there on the left, that small pile of bones, and the towel, which are resin printed. Everything else was done on the FDM printer. Now, this towel is probably the most detailed piece out of the whole model. You can see all the little pieces that sort of interlock with each other. There's these long strand type pieces that go all the way down. Um, and yeah, putting this together was a bit of a nightmare, especially because I think I had a couple of pieces the wrong way around. But you can see it all sort of interlocks with each other, all overlaps. And I did this off camera just because it was an absolute nightmare trying to work out where everything went. So I've got it all together, but you can see just how much detail is actually in this towel section. Now I'm using some aluminium armature wire for this. I wished I'd use something a little bit more sturdy just because the weight of these parts, I was actually quite impressed with how much this weighs, even though everything has got quite a low infill. Even these resin printing parts, I hollowed all of them out as well to like a 5% infill. There's still quite a lot of weight. And the armature wire being about three millimeters in diameter, there's a lot of weight there. And I did have to use quite a lot of glue in between all of these parts just to try and keep that wire curved and at the angle that I wanted it to be. So I've started off at the tip end of the towel just because it, it for some reason it just made sense to do it this way um, just so I knew how much wire I basically needed. But you can see here I'm starting to put a bend in the, curv in the curvature in the wire and that's the sort of bend that I want the towel to have just so it looks a little bit more realistic. Now I had to go and put glue on each individual piece and slide them up individually just to make sure that they're all lined up perfectly and I had everything exactly where it needed to be. Now I couldn't put too much of a bend in the towel just because the little spiny bits you can see going down the towel, if I bent this too much they'd sort of stick out a little bit too much and it didn't look that realistic. I did think about sort of bending them into place and gluing them but I didn't really want to do that. I just wanted to try and keep it as simple as possible because there was a lot of work that went into just building this towel section. So after I slid every single piece up, I think there's about 32 towel sections in, in total, maybe 33. Um, this is the sort of shape that I've gone for. So you can see there's a slight curve round to the side and it slightly angles up as well. Now I, I couldn't put too much of a curve in because the wire does bend so much. Now I've slid on the sort of next piece. This sort of comes down from the where the hip bones are. And this sort of is the, the, the main bulky part of the towel once it starts to slender down. And this was pretty similar to how I built the spine off. I believe this is an actual extension part of the spine before it gets into the towel. And again, piece by piece, I had to glue them all one at a time, slide them up. And following that curve of the spine, all the way down through the towel was quite important just because I wanted the whole thing to sort of flow as you can see I sort of tried lining it up and sort of twist the spine slightly as well just to make it try and look as realistic as possible. Now this next piece was the pelvis and you can see I already added the lower pelvis parts on off camera just because it was a bit of a pain. Now I've propped the tail up in the position that I, I want it to be to keep it curved upwards just so it's not under any pressure. And then sliding the pelvis up, again, trying to line this up perfectly with that towel part just to make sure it stays in the correct place. I chucked a couple of clippers there and then got everything absolutely solid. Now this piece was a little bit weird. Um, it reminds me of something out of Alien, but this is quite a fundamental, fundamental piece. And this is where all the rib pieces actually click in. Now there's some, some of these ribs I had to put in first just because they sort of held everything together. And there was a couple that I had to put on on their own 
and also slot in last minute. But you can see the rib pieces come out absolutely perfectly. They all line up really nicely. They've got a nice uniform line. And where that center sternum piece is, they all sort of kind of meet those parts of that as well. So that part was really satisfying to me. Now I've flipped the actual model onto its back. Again, supporting the towel with a chair. And then this just meant I could slide in all of the rib bones in place. And again, sort of adding on to that curvature of the spine that you can see I've bent the, the wire a little bit before actually gluing these uh, ribs into place. And again, it's just trying to add a little bit more movement into the, the model just to make it look a little bit more realistic rather than just a, a dinosaur looks like it's got a rod shut up its backside. So I wanted to give it just a little bit more realism. And a lot of this was very repetitive. It was a case of just sliding each piece on one by one at a time. Now this piece was a little bit more tricky. It was quite hard to see where the spine actually met up with itself. I used another package I've got here just to try and hold everything in place and then get it all set with the setting spray. Now the legs were a little bit tricky to put into place as well just because again, even though they're hollow, they were quite heavy and I found myself having to hold it for quite a long period of time. Even after using the activator spray to try and set in place, I had to sort of build up the whole area with a little bit of glue, more activator, more glue, more activator, and then just hold it until the, the piece is actually stuck in place. Now, this is how it was looking after that. You can see I'm using the, the Christmas quality streets there with some blocks just to hold that leg up in place, just to make sure it's set perfectly. And all the ribs looking down the middle are all perfectly placed as well. And even though I don't think I've put this together exactly how I should have put it together, it, it's gone well to my knowledge anyway. I think it's gone really well. Now again, more repetitive, building up that, that neck and spine area, working my way all the way up to the head. Now I didn't actually feel myself getting the head glued on just because it, I wanted to sort of save the whole model for the grand reveal at the end. Now I needed this to stand up, so I jumped onto Shaper 3D and I literally just built myself a nice little stand just to make it all sort of go together, make it all hold up nice and well, and also just to hold the position of the, 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 the skeleton of where I wanted it to be, basically. And now, as you can see, lowering it down, this is the final model. Now, I've had to jiggle it around a little bit. I need to do a little bit of work just to get the model perfectly sitting in place. So I will be adjusting uh, the stand part that holds onto the actual spine. But other than that, everything else has turned out perfect. The, the neck's got a nice curvature to it. The towel's managed to hold its curvature. The head is holding itself up. I did have to put quite a lot of glue along this neck area just to make sure it did hold in a, a decent position without dropping. And then everything else, it's all fairly supported by itself. And you can see just how much detail is actually in this model. The person that created this, it's a, I don't know if it's a single person or a whole team, but it's, um, I'll link all their details down below. They're, they've done an absolutely incredible job on this and I'm very excited to sort of move on to one of their next models. I've already got another model that's in the resin printer already that I'm working on. It's only a small model, it shouldn't take more than a day or two to get together. Um, but yeah, that'll be something popping up on my channel next and it is reptile related. But yeah, other than that, this is how the whole model looks. I've still got a few pieces to put in these, uh, the gastrolea, they sort of go down from the sternum. Um, there's also a couple of pieces that I did break off that I need to glue back on. Um, but they should go on fairly easily. But this is how the models turned out. So thank you for watching. Make sure you stick around for part three because that's when I'm actually going to get into the painting part. So thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.